All right. Now everybody's awake. <laughs> Sorry about that, but you've probably all experienced that. Uh, so I'm Brian Mark Walter. I'm with the Consumer Technology Association, as Dave said. So I'm happy to be here. Uh, we had a big meeting last week in LA, so I, I know there's a, a few people that were there for that. So we're we're uh, very happy to be part of the family of uh, broadcasting with NAB. You know, we have our our love hate relationship, but we're 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 joined in and how important the market is to us and how important serving consumers uh, is to us. So let's see how we're doing here. Um, we'll leave it alone. I thought we may, may do a little bit larger screen. Let's see how these, uh, if the slides are all readable. So I'm with the Consumer Technology Association. You probably know us, actually, everybody probably knows us from CES, at least out among uh, normal people not in the profession. Everybody knows us for CES. We're, we're big associations, so we're probably 2,000 members, everything from the largest hardware companies like Apple and Sony and Samsung, on down to uh, lots of startups and lots of installers, retailers and chip companies. So what I want to do is just kind of frame up like the overall size of the industry. So I'll look at, at some of the big picture items first. Just kind of how we're doing and how big we are. Then I'm going to spend a little bit of time on audio, a little bit of time on, on video, and I think it'll be a good setup for some of the other papers during the day. So I'm just covering kind of broadly what we see, in particular in terms of hardware, hardware sales and some of the services and uh, what, what it means for how people are changing. So CTA, we do, we do a forecast twice, we update it twice a year, so we release it in January and July, so we release it around CES and we do an update mid-year. Um, we look across uh, more than 100 product categories and drill down, we ask our members what they think will sell. Um, so they project for the whole industry, not their individual sales. We combine all that information, do our own research, and then project a whole bunch of across the, the whole industry. So th this year in, in July, we, we had an interesting thing happen. So in January, we forecasted for 2018, I think around a little bit over 3%. By July, our numbers had trended way up. So this is, if you just look down here at 2018, we see 6% growth. Uh, that's 2018 over 2017. That's really strong. So we, you know, we of course had some internal debate about, wow, that's a, you know, we're raising our forecast mid-year um, by, by quite a bit. That's obviously larger than GDP growth, but some of that reflects just the overall trend in the industry. There's a trend towards buying tech, and of course the economy's doing pretty well. Now there's a big footnote on this, and that's the tariff situation. So we're, and that still hasn't fully played out. So as we were doing this forecast, of course, tariffs were on the horizon. I can't remember if we had done, I think, <laughs> As we were locking down this forecast and releasing it, I think the first batch of 34 billion, so I don't know if you, actually some of your products were affected, I'm sure, because in some of the early rounds, but so if you remember, there's 34 billion, then 16 billion, and then 200 billion just went in the most recent round that covered uh, many, many things. Um, but so far for this year, it looks like a very strong uh, year. This is hardware and a little bit of streaming stuff I'll talk about in just a minute. If we look at the top overall products, just revenue-wise that people buy, you're probably not shocked to see that smartphones are, are at the top of the list here. So right, right here, uh, top row, 20, here's 2018 numbers, this column here. So $78 billion in smartphones. Um, so, you know, they're pretty expensive product. You think about it, you can buy $1,000 smartphones and you can get a screen this big, or you can get a 60 or 65 inch TV for about the same price. Um, and the, the difference is people are turning over their smartphones every two to three years. It's stretched out just a little bit, but you know people are refreshing them and we'll see that show up in some separate data in just a moment. But if we continue through the list, laptops are hanging in there. Of course, you know they went through their their, their rough patch a few years ago when tablets were introduced and people weren't really sure if they would be displaced. They're, they've kind of stabilized as you can see. So they're, they're still in at number two, uh, almost 30 billion. Then TVs in there, they tend to hover around 20 billion. Um, we, we, we track 
uh, factory installed automotive. So the stuff that sold in as like tier one into the automotive industry, the entertainment portion. So that's a little bit, that's not directly a consumer sale. So maybe we can ignore that for, for this talk and then, and then tablets. So what you might also notice is we love our screens. So screens make up effectively all, all the top categories minus the car. And I guess if you look at new cars, it's kind of a big screen with uh, some mobility wrap, wrapped around it. So we're heading in that direction too. Um, okay, so the other way we slice our forecast, just to kind of understand what's going on at, at, at sort of the, the leading edge is to look at the emerging tax. We have a, we have a definition for emerging tax in terms of how old certain things are. Um, and we look at those and their contribution to the industry. Uh, so smart speakers at the top, $3 billion, and, and look at this growth. I, I have some separate slides on this, but this has really skyrocketed and been rapidly adopted by consumers. Then VR and AR eyewear, which is having a, a really different kind of phenomenon. So we've had a few waves of introduction, in particular we've had the Sony, uh, you know, Sony's gaming console, um, PlayStation VR, so I think it, it kind of legitimized and hit part of the market. And then we've seen a couple of hardware refreshes on the AR and VR side. Um, the other really hot category is this uh, wireless earbuds. I'll do a slide on that. And then actually if we collected all these smart related products, they would probably pop up here. So right, right now we have them separated because they're really hard to categorize. But there's a, a whole set of smart home related products that are are small but steady and and growing and that's um, that's been enabled in fact by smart speakers so it used to be really cumbersome um, I think we're this looks like pretty much the age bracket that has seen everything from like X10 to today in terms of attempts at home automation it's always been a, you know a tough sell to get people to adopt uh, smart home products but you can see by this list that we've got a whole bunch of things in there um, that that are smart products. Oh, and one other thing to watch, since we all know and love 5G, so we, we added 5G to our forecast because uh, carriers were starting to introduce, so we're seeing it a couple of different ways. One we call the home gateways, which are like the, the little, little boxes for the companies, for the carriers doing um, uh, either like a fixed wireless or sort of a mobile, you know, like the MiFi type application where you come in, you put down this box and it makes a little hotspot for you. Um, another study we do in the spring, and a lot of times when, like at the ATSC annual conference, we'll release some of this data. So usually around April, we do our annual, uh, what we call ownership and market potential study. So we, add, we go out and ask 2,000 consumers what they own, how many of them, and what they plan to buy. So it's kind of our benchmark study of intent. And we can look at that a few different ways. That, so our baseline numbers, when, when we project like ha, how many TVs or whatever some, the, is, are owned in the US, we use that study. Uh, so what we see is, uh, as we just talked about, so smartphones, 30% are saying, of consumers are saying they intend to buy a smartphone in the next 12 months and that's pretty steady now they it's just kind of always you, you know well you can just do the math so if people are replacing them you know less than every three years then you're probably in somebody's window every year that they're planning on on making a purchase um, more interesting maybe is the streaming media devices of, of all kinds but all, all kinds of sticks and uh, Apple or uh, fire TV and Apple's products um, they've really come on and are, are steady sellers. So 39%, we saw a, a huge increase in the percentage of homes that have some sort of streaming media device. And then lastly, sort of a, uh, one other way to look at the data, the 4K UHD TVs and HDR. So those went up. And, and this really has to do with that people buy about, we buy about 40 million TVs a year and an increasing number of those are our UHD TV. So by 15 percentage points, the ownership in the U.S. went up, is going up in, from 2017 to 18. Okay, looking at uh, streaming services. So we just started tracking streaming this year. We've not 
traditionally done, I guess what you'd call like music and media sales. We've done, we've tracked gaming sales, but you know, we, we want to pay attention to where consumers are spending money, their whole basket of, of uh, consumer technology spending. And so a bigger chunk of that is going towards streaming services. And we can see this pivot from uh, so this excludes subscription services. So we're starting to just look at streaming. So this includes two phenomena. One is the shift from either physical ownership of media and, and music, that also means downloads to streaming, and then the uh, adoption of streaming video services, which I'm sure you all are, are very aware of. But the, you know, the kind of numbers we're seeing are 20% are overall from uh, 18 to 19, so slightly less than this year, so maybe a, a little bit of a deceleration. Um, actually, music is still growing pretty strongly, 30, 32% this year over last year, and video is 42% um, this year over last year. <laughs> All right, I'm, let, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time in the audio category and talk about what's happening there, and I think there are, are two Two big things that are happening in the audio category. One is wireless speakers, you can't miss that effect. And, and the other are changes in the headphone category. Um, so I didn't put it in here, but right behind smartphones, uh, we, we churn through a lot of headphones. Let me just say, so if you look at purchase intent and you group the different kinds of headphones, they're like number two, three, four, and five. But we just, I think some of it is the effect of, you know, we buy them for, specific applications. Sometimes you buy kind of cheap ones that you don't care if they, you know, you lose them or something. You buy nice ones for travel maybe. You buy ones for sports. Um, anyway, so we see a, a lot of turnover in headphones. Um, this is a, a, a chunk of the overall, so our 370 billion-ish kind of industry overall, looking at a, the segment of audio products. Um, so because of wireless speakers and headphones, um, it's been a, you know, it's a good year for audio. There, I'll, I'll cover radio and some traditional products. They're, as you might guess, pretty stagnant, but in, in terms of the, the category as a whole, which, you know, has not, over the past 20 years, has not always had um, a lot of growth, and sometimes it's been, it's been kind of the, the, the laggard in as certain things took off, like smartphones and tablets. Uh, but for this year, it's a very, it's definitely a very good year for audio. Okay, looking at that headphone phenomenon I talked about, um, the the big turnover and change is shift from wired to wireless. You can see uh, right here. So the lower bar is this green color. That's the wired side. So this is a mix of of headphones total. And uh, you can see kind of growth we're getting in wireless headphones, 18, and it's continuing. So this started, it, it really started cranking about two years ago. We've, we've had them for a while, but um, you know, the thing that kind of flipped the switch, of course, was Apple removing the, the, um, uh, the little audio jack on their phones, which, you know, and then introducing a lot of companies came in, and people have now, at this point, just are kind of making that move. and and really buying a lot of uh, wireless headphones. So it, it will slow down a little bit as we transition, and for sure there's gonna be wired. I mean, not everybody, there's, there's you gotta charge wireless headphones things, so they're, they're not gonna completely displace wired, but um, you can see what a change it's made. Um, and this, this also relates um, to, to this phenomenon, which is kind of the combination of the digital assistant, so the, um, Alexa, uh, Cortana, Siri, the availability of, of this digital assistant, which also is embodied in smart speakers that we'll talk about. Um, so these wireless earbuds are kind of a perfect companion now for the smartphone, so you don't have to be tethered, you don't have to pull out your smartphone necessarily. So you can call up a lot of functions, and um, a, as a result, so here's of course, you know, what we see with Apple's products, but there, there are bunches of, there are lots of form factors for um, these wireless uh, earbuds. And here's what, we're, what we see happening on the revenue side. So, you know, almost 50% growth this year. So it really has been a, a really hot um, category. 
All right, looking at uh, so traditional, what I call traditional radio products, we, we don't always have a lot of deep data on this because obviously radios fi find, find their way into a lot of products. We do forecast tabletop radios and you can see um, it's decreased a little bit, but it's, it's not, uh, so it's hovered kind of nine million units for a while. So those are not bad numbers really for a product that doesn't get a lot of uh, attention. We're still, we're still doing seven million uh, units per year. The bar down at the bottom, this kind of orangish color, that's AV receivers. That, that category of course has been, you know, when we switched from component uh, component audio, that's, that's been a tough category for a long time. It's steady, we sell a lot of them, and that, that industry always innovates. So, you know, you've seen inclusion of all sorts of wireless and, and even smart capabilities now in AV receivers. But it, it's a tough lift to get people to do multi-channel AVRs there. And sound bars have had a lot to do with that. There's really good sound bars out there, and so people will you know, people are like work averse. They will they will tend to do things that are convenient. So they'll put a big screen up there. They'll get a nice sound bar, and there's some really good ones that do some cool things. And they're also smart now. Um, so it, it puts some some downward pressure. People are a little bit committed when they're doing uh, AV receivers. What we do see is so we we saw this introduction of all these products, and I think part of what drove that high volume so quickly, and by the way, so we should talk about a few things here. So we, we had this really fast ramp, and we, we got pretty good penetration quickly. So for a brand new category, to me the phenomenon was a little bit like tablets. Air, air kind of, it like kind of worked for a lot of people very quickly. Now tablets, well, you know, all these products have this S adoption curve, so they get introduced, and you can just play with the shape of the curve, you, you know, and eventually they will taper off. But like we've seen TVs, so if you look back at the data like from the 50s, how quickly they took off, ramp up to some penetration. TVs hit like 98, 99% penetration and are hanging out pretty close here. We've seen a little bit of a fall. So tablets went up to some level in a few years, four or five years, and then kind of rolled off pretty quickly. We, we see a similar thing with smart speakers. So it, it, it looks like people quit buying them. Really, that's really a slowdown. So a lot of people adopt really fast, and then in a few years, by 2021, we see this, this slowdown. This is a rapidly changing category, though, too, because there's, so, there's the there's the smart part of it, which can be embodied anywhere. So there's the smart speaker part, and we see people um, buying these speakers and ones with screens and putting them in a lot of places, but we're also gonna see those get integrated into other places. And so that's what we, we see here. You see ones with screens that kind of have a little bit more of a video or content orientation. Uh, we, we see ones, and I'll have another slide in a minute on what Amazon's doing, which I find really interesting. Um, but, but then again, part, so these hit around Christmas, I think two years ago. So Google introduced, they, they're almost like impulse buys. You know, you could buy like a couple of these for, you know, 50, 60 bucks or something, 30 bucks each or something for the small ones. So it was really easy for people to, to try them out. And you saw this kind of rush among the big players for, market share, so that, that drove a lot of this. But satisfaction actually is, is high with these. Um, so tying this back maybe to the broadcast side and the radio side, um, so we have looked at, I'm trying to remember which study this was from. Uh, so we did a study on voice shopping, so we're kind of interested in, in how much effect these smart speakers were having on, on shopping itself, but from that, sort of as part of that overall study, we were trying to understand what consumers do with their smart speakers. So here's, here's the top ones, and you, you may have seen similar data. Some ways not shocking, but the thing I think that is important is that number three on the list for the, um, noted almost 50% of the time is simply asking them to play music. So it's sort of their their radio station that they can turn on and tune with their voice. Um, so I've, I've given a, a number of these talks. So for a year or two now, our message has been, 
if you don't have a strategy around voice interaction, then you, you need to get on top of things because you know consumers are now expecting for some part of what they do to interact with their voice. Um, so you see a whole bunch of other kind of convenience things. So as it turns out with shopping, if you care, um, it, it's hard to, what we found is there's a lot of shopping in terms of starting the process. There's a lot less pulling the trigger on the actual purchase because it's, in part, it's hard to compare. So if you're going to do comparison, um, you know, if you're doing voice things, it'll sort of rattle off some products, but you can't look side by side like, like you can with a, a screen. So. So down here you see they'll, they'll kind of research, but um, they'll maybe add a shopping list. The thing they will do, if it's like a repeat sort of commodity purchase, they'll, they'll do that. So we'll see where this goes, but it's clearly an integrated part of people's lives who, who have purchased uh, smart speakers. Um, this, this data uh, I found interesting. You probably know it better than I do. It's RIAA. So they, on their website, they have a neat kind of interactive tool you can plug in and look over a long history of data. So this goes back, uh, sorry, you can't, can't read, but here's vinyl back here, so I, I can't remember what year. That's maybe 80s or 70s. But you can see the waves of change in the physical, first the physical media, so what people bought, the long, the long life of, of CDs here. This section right here in purple is download. So we saw uh, introduction of iPod and smartphone and Apple sort of breaking the code on making download music super convenient. And you know, I have I have a belief that the way technology changes so Despite our attempts to sell them like the best possible picture and non-compressed audio and nice component stereo, people will go to convenience first, and and then I think quality catches up later. So we see that a lot. So they'll move. If, if you look back in the 50s, so everybody used to go to the theater in the 20s and 30s. There are some stunning figures about how often people went to the theater in the U.S. Once TV hit. You should see the charts on how quickly movie theater attendance dropped off. Well, clearly the picture, which back then was you know this this big and black and white, was not as good. But eventually it it got good. Um, what we see coming in here in green is streaming. So l look how short kind of the in 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 our in our, our kind of uh, epochs here uh, downloads pretty short phenomenon, but streaming is really coming on fast. So people are obviously interested, um, and maybe this relates a little bit to sort of that millennial Gen Z, They're, they care more about experiences than ownership, so whereas for us it may have been, well I want to own my movie, I want a physical copy of it, which does not matter to the next generation. Okay, so um, a lot of times we have multiple phenomena kind of coming together. So we see streaming, and I don't know if there's any, there's probably some, well, they're happening independently. So streaming was happening independent of smart speakers, but, but they've combined. We see this a bunch where we get these changes in technology that um, then cause whole shifts in the way people do things. So, and we're seeing that effect with streaming and sp Smart speakers, of course, big news in the last couple of weeks was um, Sirius XM buying Pandora. So clearly they felt like they had to have a, a streaming play out. We probably have somebody from uh, Sirius XM here. And uh, down here, so this picture in the lower left, Amazon had a, a quote, surprise hardware event a few weeks ago. So go back and, and look. Actually, you can just, you can just Google uh, Amazon hardware event or something like that. And, they introduced a whole family of products, and, and I was impressed with the breadth of it. And that includes uh, like an amplifier type product, a separate audio component, and kind of a woofer type, like a richer audio type product. So they're both going up in the audio kind of product category and across, you know, so they can't leave out the, the video oriented products. Plus, then everybody is trying to get small simple devices because you want you know you want the if if you're trying to own that voice interaction you want them to have 
one product in the bedroom, you know, by the bedside table, something in the kitchen, something in the TV room or the wherever they relax. Uh, all right, so let's spend a little time on video. Dave, how are we doing on time? Okay. So video. Um, all right, so it's a big part of our lives. Um, we, we Americans watch a phenomenal amount of video. Um, I always thought, well, gosh, it's got to—it's got to go down. You know, you see, like hours a day on average. Well, what, what's actually happened is they figured out they—they they just watch smaller segments on smaller devices. It's kind of—it's been additive uh, for the for the most part. Um, but we do own a lot of TVs. I mentioned this before. So household penetration is about 96%. Uh, this is from our ownership and market potential study I, I talked about. We own a little bit over two and a half. Uh, TV sets per household, that's come down just a little bit. And I think that's because there are other options. So it used to be you had a big TV, after 10 years you moved it, so the kids had one, maybe had a game console, you had one in the basement, you probably had one parked in the garage. You, you know, so we just kind of held on to them for a long time. Their life, you know, we would average, they'd like last 12 years or so, now it's more like uh, eight or nine. So the total ownership has come down. I think people might use tablets in some places. They might have left a TV before, but really it hasn't moved the installed base by all that much. So a little bit over 3 million total, or 300 million total out there. Uh, the market itself goes through a lot, of, a lot of changes. And the one, of course, we're going through now because we're several years into it, is a uh, uh, 4K Ultra HD change <coughs> inclusive of HDR. So of course, 4K got introduced first. We're, we're now several years, five years, I have to go back and look. We're, we're several years into it. Um, as I mentioned, we sell about 40 million. So this top number, we sell about 40 million total per year. There's about 20 billion in revenue. But it's swinging. This year, I, I thought we were going to cross over where we would sell more 4K Ultra HD TVs than HD, than 2K. I don't think we're, in terms of unit sales, I don't think we're quite going to get there. But in terms of dollars, we definitely are by, by far. I'll have another slide on that. So we're definitely going to outsell in terms of revenue. 4K Ultra HD is going to sell a lot more than, than uh, high definition. Um, they're shifting larger, so 50 inches now more than 40% of TVs, and 60 inch are, are 20%. Um, so they've gotten, of course, thinner, lighter, more cost effective, the panel. So the industry is very much driven by panel supply. So, you know, the panel makers move once they can get yields up in a, a certain category. So you also see this like everything moves like 55, 60, 65 is the panel output hits certain certain points. Um, here we just talked about this 4K UHD. Uh, so far, this is about a month ago actually, but 40% year to date. And, and the holiday, of course, is a bigger chunk. You know, it doesn't just spread out evenly. We sell a lot in the fourth quarter. Uh, and I expect that to be weighted towards 4K Ultra HD. Um, Smart is very much common now, I forget the numbers, that it's pushing like 70%. So it's actually a higher percentage of smart TVs than 4K Ultra HD. So that should make sense if you think about it. There's plenty of smart of HD smart TVs. Almost everything you, you see in Ultra HD is going to be smart, yeah, but that's also bled down into many lower end TVs. And then voice interaction is also a big part of it. So remotes, um, and, the, and Cable and others who have done a, a good job of this, of introducing uh, voice search into their products. And um, we are, so OLED, we have a couple more manufacturers who have introduced OLED products, so it's climbing up. You know, it was kind of a premium category. And then QLED, which is uh, the quantum dot, so Samsung's approach to using quantum dot, which helps them do dynamic range and uh, wider color. And not yet so much for consumers, but we have the micro LED uh, products which are used for these r really large format displays. So I'm, I'm really curious what we'll see at CES this year in terms of micro LED. So we saw there were some stunning displays of 
this micro LED, which is an emissive technology, so it makes light right at screens using LEDs. Um, so it's it's really beautiful stuff, but it's very big and they tend to be modular, so it's a little bit aimed at the B2B market. All right, so just looking at uh, UHD itself, uh, so by 2020, we're gonna, it'll be 75%. Uh, sometimes I'm surprised it's not, not higher, but I always remind myself when I look at, at the tail end of technology, it takes a long time for things to wash out. We, we sell, you'd be surprised how long DVD players sell and how many DVDs themselves still sell. So, um, and we didn't quit tracking CRTs and VHS sold for a lot, you know, people have these, will keep buying the very low end products because maybe they have the content around. So it'll take a little while to kind of push out uh, HD. Um, but, and here, here's what I talked about. So out of 20 billion, we're, we're already revenue wise, we're already well over half. And um, because I know that you guys were wanting 8K, we are introducing uh, 8K uh, this year. So I think you'll see it in stores this holiday season and you'll see it at, at uh, CS. So maybe you can do a panel on the merits of uh, 8K, Dave. Um, all right. Devices and streaming. Uh, so there, there are a lot of ways that consumers can get streaming products. So up here in this first bullet you see, so Blu-ray players of course have it, smart TVs, and smart TVs are the, are the dominant way right now just because we sell you know, 40 million of them a year and some high percentage of them are smart. But of course gaming consoles allow streaming. And then there's inexpensive, just separate streaming media uh, devices. So uh, that's part of what's fueling the streaming effect is, you know, like all, all these things, you need a service, you need a device to go with it. So consumers readily have the capability to be able to try out streaming services. Uh, we have um, Blu-ray, this really is UH, UHD Blu-ray, the new format. Uh, doing a little bit over uh, a million units a year, so that's not that's not exactly like um, burning things up, but you know people. So if you want the premium experience, and that sold, so we see the UHD premium logo, uh, UHD Blu-ray players. Um, anyway, so we're we're seeing this kind of double-digit growth still in uh, streaming media players. Okay, we, I'm gonna talk a little bit about <clears throat> some segmentation research we've just done. We actually haven't published this yet, but I found it interesting. So this is, I'm gonna, not gonna have some detailed data, but I just thought it was kind of interesting. We'll probably release this in the next few weeks, so we've got the data back. But what we did, we, so we went out and asked a bunch of questions about video uh, device ownership and sources, how they're getting their content and how they, <clears throat> how they use it. Um, and then so we, we did some clustering and some analysis to try to segment it. So we, we didn't ask them which, which segment they belong in. We asked them a bunch of questions, then group it to, to, and, and uh, name some categories here. Uh, we'll, we'll start with the ones that are m maybe uh, easiest to understand. So the traditionalists, this, this is gonna be the people, they're just sticking to cable TV, older, they watch TV on a TV. So that's a pretty, you kind of get that phenomenon. Um, and we'll, we'll, I'll, sh I'll show you kind of the age breakout here in just a minute, which helps reveal what these categories are about. So the traditionals over here are almost a third. 90% um, of viewing is on, on a TV. So that's just straight up TV watchers. Then an another segment are the value conscious streamers. So well, if you look across the whole population, uh, and you, you know, there's like people who have time but no money and people who have money but no time. So, and this shapes a lot of how, how things turn out in our lifestyles and segmentation. Um, plus you get people that are like tech adopters and people are tech averse. That phenomenon shows up. So the, in the value conscious streamer, which is a, a big, big chunk here. Um, so there's a low monthly spend on, on, um, on content and they're, they're tend a little bit more towards the streaming side. So more likely to use streaming than cable. And then there's a couple of other 
uh, sort of in between. So if I think of these as like the two of the value conscious and the traditional, so the two extremes, there's two other ones hanging out in other sections. One is this device diverse viewers. So these are, are more tech savvy, so they tend to have more devices, but they spend a little bit less on content. So I think, I think of those who are the ones who don't want to keep paying that monthly bill, but they'll go, they'll go buy the latest thing, but they won't, uh, you know, they're probably sharing logins and doing all the things you would expect. Uh, then experience seekers, a um, little bit more willing to like try out different contents. So they're more about the, slightly more weighted towards the content than the devices. Uh, so if we look at it sort of uh, in a made up chart, devices on the vertical axis, sources on the horizontal axis. So you can see over here, device diverse, uh, they're higher on the device side, um, tend to have more sources. Traditionalists down here on this side, uh, fewer devices, fewer sources, just give me TV with my subscription service like I'm used to, it's convenient, I love it. Experience seekers tend towards the devices and maybe fewer sources, so they, they won't churn through a lot of sources. And then value conscious down here, a little bit pressed on both um, sources and devices. And, and here's the age breakout, or, or a little bit of information about the ages. So traditionalists, as you guessed, are skewed much higher on, on the older age range up here. Uh, so older millennials, 52%. Uh, at the other extreme, device diverse viewers, so these are the ones I mentioned, more willing to try devices and maybe cutting corners on the content. So they skew to uh, Gen Z and younger millennials. And uh, also experience seekers tend to be older. So the, these are the ones who um, m maybe are not so interested in having the latest gadget. And then value conscious is just a spread. So this is probably more driven by maybe um, just you know their economic situation or something, or available money. All right, I'm gonna spend a couple of slides on, we're almost at the end, a couple of slides on uh, antennas and we're refreshing so actually we have uh, a few video studies that are still coming out so we're doing a refresh every couple of years we'll look at uh, where consumers get content including antenna you know how, how much is antenna usage I know there's lots of data out there on it and you've probably seen the numbers so we saw trend down for a while it seem, seems to have kind of bottomed up bottomed and trending up uh, so that is reflected this is actually from our forecast. So it, it has trended up, you know, it's not double digit growth, but there's a steady upward trend. And we get lots of questions about this. I'm sure you do in your, in your local areas. Uh, you'll see occasional articles about, you know, what kind of antenna do I have to use? And um, sort of this mix of cord cutting plus uh, antenna usage. Um, we have asked about about why, so we also want to understand what's what's <coughs> happening, and uh, a bunch of it is in this case. So these are are cord cutters or shavers, probably cutters, because so the biggest category was uh, I had I had pay TV, and I tried cutting the cord and I struggled with something I really wanted, which was my local uh, my my local live TV. Um, and then other mixes, you know, like supplementing on-demand content. So maybe it's a little bit hard to distinguish some of these, but clearly what's driving a bunch of this is simply, you know, I want, I want my local stations and it's hard to get outside of a, a traditional pay TV package. There, there's definitely, there's obviously some streaming services that will accommodate that. Um, all right, and, and we're also doing some, uh, we're doing some research, I don't know when we'll release it. So, you know, I think Pearl released some research this, was it this year or previous year at ATSC's meeting. So we're looking at some of the usage and, and what's going to be attractive for ATSC 3.0 that we'll release. All right, so I just want to wrap up now that I've given you all this wonderful um, information about our studies and a, as we ask people things. So this. This may be a little bit sobering for 
how we think about asking people what they expect in the in the future so we've done this 2018 was our 20th year of doing our ownership and market potential study so 20 years ago we ask uh, <laughs> would, would you want to own a TV a flat panel TV that that hangs like a picture on the wall so 60% said never there's absolutely no reason to own something like that uh, and of course all those people have gone out and done away with their 200 pound CRT TV and put a nice uh, beautiful flat panel TV uh, on their wall so the other thing maybe worse is 71% uh, said they would never be interested in owning a combination telephone with screen to browse the internet that we now know as a smartphone. And uh, so, that, so just be careful about what, uh, asking people things they haven't really experienced yet. Mm -hmm.